If you're thinking of upgrading to AMD's current AM5 platform, you're probably researching not just which CPU to buy, along with the supporting motherboard, but also which DDR5 memory kit you'll need. Now to date we've reviewed and tested all AM5 processors along with countless 600 and 800 series motherboards, but it's been some time since I had a look at memory performance. So today we have a bit of a quick update for you because I've got G-Skill's new low latency CL26 memory along with the DDR5-8000 configuration so we can check out what performance looks like there. Now, since the introduction of AM5, we've benchmarked using G-Skill's Trident Zing Neo RGB DDR5-6000 CL30 memory using a 32GB kit, which currently costs $110 US. So a very reasonable price, though you can get similar memory kits much cheaper now, and we'll talk about that soon. AMD did initially provide this memory to reviewers for evaluating the performance of Zen 4 claiming it enabled optimal performance, while also stating that DDR5-6000 was the sweet spot, and this certainly was true for Zen 4. With the release of Zen 5 though, the messaging from AMD did get a little bit wishy-washy. They still claimed that DDR5-6000 was the sweet spot, and recommended reviewers use the same DDR5-6000 CL30 memory for all of their testing, but they also promoted the new, and I'm doing new in quotation marks because it's really refreshed, 800 series motherboards by claiming that the X870E boards would provide the best performance thanks to support for DDR5-8000. This was confusing for a few reasons, most notably of which was the fact that 800 series chipsets were really just 600 series chipsets with a new name. They were refreshed for Zen 5. So if an X870 motherboard supports DDR5-8000 memory, this should also be true of an X670 board. And in fact, it has since been proven that that is indeed the case. However, it gets a little more complicated than that because DDR5-8000 support is limited by the motherboard, not the Zen 5 memory controller or the chipset. For example, when testing every single X870 slash X870E motherboard, I found that only around half of the 21 boards that I tested worked with DDR5-8000, while the rest were unstable or simply failed to boot at all. All of that testing was of course conducted using the same Ryzen 9 9950X CPU and DDR5-8000 memory kit, so the limiting factor there was the motherboard. It's possible some of these boards could achieve DDR5-8000 support with a BIOS update, but we've not been able to confirm this yet. So as it stands, DDR5-8000 isn't ideal for X870 motherboards as AMD claimed, and from what we've seen in the past, it's not necessarily even an optimal configuration performance, but we'll take another updated look at this today. The reason why DDR5-8000 isn't necessarily faster or much faster than DDR5-6000, despite a 33% increase in theoretical bandwidth, is due to the frequency at which the integrated memory controller within the I.O. die can operate at. When using DDR5-6000 memory, for example, the memory clock is 3000 MHz, and this can be matched by the UCLK, the Unified Memory Controller Clock Frequency, and this sets the speed for the integrated memory controller. So in short, this configuration allows the DDR5 memory and integrated memory controller to run at a 1 to 1 ratio at 3000 MHz. But when going beyond a DDR5 memory clock frequency of 3000 MHz, the integrated memory controller is forced to run at a 2 to 1 ratio, and this is because it can't exceed 3000 MHz and maintain stability, or at least this will be true for the majority of silicon. And this means, when using DDR5-8000, which has a memory clock frequency of 4000 MHz, the memory controller defaults to a 2 to 1 ratio which sees it operate at just 2000 MHz, so 33% lower than what is achieved with DDR5-6000. However, the additional memory bandwidth that DDR5-8000 provides can overcome the penalty of the 2 to 1 ratio, sometimes resulting in better performance, that is assuming you have an AM5 motherboard that is stable at this frequency. So to find out, today we're comparing the Ryzen 7 9700X using DDR5-8000, along with a number of 6000 configurations, one of which is based on G-Skill's new CL26 memory. And I'll also include a base spec 5600 configuration. I'm sure many of you are keen to see these results with a CPU such as the 9800X 3D, but I didn't bother including this CPU as it's a lot of extra work and we already know this processor isn't sensitive to memory performance. Now this was most recently explored with the 9950X 3D, 
so DDR5 performance is more of an issue for the non-3D processors. So, let's get in the data. Starting with Cyberpunk 2077, at 1080p, we're seeing as much as a 12% performance improvement from the 6000 CL30 memory used for our reviews when compared to the DDR5 8000 configuration which did end up delivering the best results, though it was only 2% faster than the new CL26-6000 memory. Quite unexpectedly though, we only saw a very little difference in performance between the CL40 and CL30-6000 configurations, and even the 5600 memory configuration was right there. Now, if we lower the frame rate to just over 100 FPS by increasing the resolution to 4K, the performance deficit from the slowest to fastest configuration is just 5% though we do see a much larger 13% margin when looking at the 1% lows. The other single player game that we've used for testing here is Horizon Zero Dawn Remastered, and here we're seeing quite a wide spread of results. The 6000 CL30 review memory averaged 169 FPS, making it 5% faster than the official base spec memory. Still, if we were to opt for DDR5 8000, that provided an additional 7% performance over the review memory, hitting 180 FPS, though it was only just 2% faster than the new CL26 6000 stuff. Again, if we increase the GPU load by switching to the 4K resolution, the margins are greatly reduced, and now the 8000 memory is just 5% faster than the 5600 base configuration. We're also seeing at most a 6% increase from the 6000 CL30 review memory, to the 8000 stuff, and just a 1% increase for the average frame rate. Now, for competitive multiplayer shooters, where you're more likely to lower the GPU load by using medium to low quality settings, memory performance can make a bigger difference as these conditions are more likely to see frame rates CPU limited. Testing with Marvel Rivals at 1080p saw a 17% increase in 1% lows when going from the base spec 5600 memory all the way up to DDR5 8000, while the average frame rate improved by 9%. That said, as good as the DDR5 8000 performance was, we were able to replicate similar results with the DDR5 6000 CL26 memory. Now, scaling at 4K was a bit unusual, as we only saw performance fall away when using the DDR5 6000 CL40 memory, and performance here was comparable to the base spec 5600 stuff. Lastly, we have Counter-Strike 2, and here the DDR5 8000 and CL26 6000 memory again delivered similar performance, and really the same was also true of the CL28 memory. We're also only looking at a 4% improvement when going from CL30 memory to the premium 8000 kit. Again, 6000 CL40 and 5600 CL38 produced similar results, though they were only a few percent slower than the review memory. Then at 4K, the data becomes almost entirely GPU limited, as all configurations were good for over 450 FPS. So there you have it. As expected, when CPU limited, DDR5 memory can improve performance of AMD's latest generation Zen 5 processors. Though I'd say based on what we've seen here, Zen 5 isn't as memory sensitive as previous generation Ryzen processors. The new CL26 memory, for example, at most provided a 9% uplift over the CL30 memory, which is the memory we use to evaluate Zen 5's performance in our day one reviews and all the follow-up content that we've done since then. And that's a pretty big uplift, but for the most part, the gains were really more 4 to 5%, which I think is to be expected. Then with DDR5 8000, that was also up to 12% faster than the review memory, though when compared to the CL26 stuff, so the low latency DDR5 6000 memory, the performance was very similar. So DDR5 6000 CL26 and DDR5 8000 CL38, you can expect pretty similar gaming performance. Again, stuff like memory performance is really only going to matter for those of you playing competitive shooters or games that tend to be more CPU limited than GPU limited. So that means for GPU heavy single player titles such as Indiana Jones and the Great Circle, Alan Wake 2 or Horizon Zero Dawn for example, premium memory is generally going to offer you very little in the way of additional performance, meaning you are better off going with sweet spot memory, which we believe to be DDR5 6000 CL30. Looking exclusively at 32GB kits, it's quite clear that DDR5 5600 isn't worth the small savings it offers, as a decent kit will cost you $80 US, while a good quality 6000 CL30 kit is only $10 more. However, the CL28 kits, they jump up to $120 US, 
while the new CL26 kits are at least $180 US. So they're clearly not worth paying twice as much for when compared to the CL30 kits. You're also looking at having to spend $170 US on DDR5-8000 memory, though you might come across the odd kit which is quite a bit cheaper than that, but still much more expensive than CL36000. So as has been the case since the release of Zen 4, we recommend you pair your AM5 processor with DDR5-6000 CL30 memory. And as a side note, I've previously tested many more memory configurations with the Ryzen 7 7700X in eight games using the RTX 4090, and I found similar results. The DDR5-6000 CL30 memory used for our reviews provides optimal performance, and even when manually tuned using timings from Buildzoid, performance was only improved by a further 4% on average. As for the new low latency DDR5-6000 CL26 memory, hopefully this stuff ends up being much more competitively priced in the near future, because there are certainly some nice performance benefits to be had, but right now the price premium heavily outweighs any of those performance benefits. As a side note, I'm also about to start testing every single AMD B850 motherboard. It's going to be quite interesting to see what DDR5-8000 support looks like there. So it'll be some time before I get that content out, but I am about to start testing. So fingers crossed it's in the next two months or so. For now, though, we are done with this quick little memory update. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the brief look at CL26 performance and, uh, and the DDR5-8000 stuff. Um, if you did, we've got the join button. Oh, actually, no, sorry. If you did, I guess like the video. You can like it, give it a thumbs up, subscribe for more content in the future. And if you want more Harbour Unbox goodness, we have the join button. I got ahead of myself and Patreon. Either one of those works. You get access to our exclusive Discord server, monthly live streams, Q&A stuff, and behind the scenes content. So check that out if you're interested. But if not, just give it a thumbs up. I'm your host, Steve. See you next time.